Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam once saw a procession of people passing by as a grave, as, a, as the body of one of the people were being taken towards a grave. And at that point, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, this authentic hadith in Bukhari. And so people started saying bad things about that person. And at that point, when they were saying bad things, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, it has become compulsory. And another procession passed by, and the, and, and the people started saying good things about the man, and at that point, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, again, meaning it has become compulsory. So the people said, Ya Rasulullah, what do you mean by it has become compulsory? So Rasulullah sallallahu explained and he said, the first procession passed by and he said bad things about the person. So Jahannam has become obligatory on him. He must enter and will enter, surely enter Jahannam. And the second procession passed by and you said good things about, about him. So it has become obligatory meaning, Jannah has become obligatory for him. So how will you pass by? How will you pass away? And what will people say after you? The first night in the grave is truly the most important night that we will ever have to have. Why? Because truly, this is our hereafter. Because you might be thinking, okay, hereafter we're waiting for the blowing of the horn. Once a group of people came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, authentic hadith in Muslim, and said, Ya Rasulullah, mata sa'a? Ya Rasulullah, when is the hour? At that point, Rasulullah sallallahu said, the youngest amongst you will not grow old except that your hereafter will have started already. Because your, your hereafter is, is with your death. Do not await the blowing of the horn, it's with your death. As soon as you die, your hereafter will have started already. And once pro, the, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa as in an authentic hadith again in Bukhari, the chapter of funeral uh, processions and prayers, in that chapter, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi he came out of his hut and he was crying so much that his eyes had become red. And he came to the people and he said, Were it be that you would never bury a dead, I would have asked Allah to let you hear of the, you know, the grave from what I hear. It is for this reason why a lot of well, the animals, for example, are the, are the ones who can hear the screams of the people who have been touched. And yet we humans do not hear that scream. Do you know in the authentic hadith in Bukhari, a man stood up from the Sahaba, they are the best of the best, right? On that Friday, and the Prophet was giving a talk, and the Prophet said, Today you will not ask me about anything except that I will tell you. So the Sahaba stood up and he said, Ya Rasulullah, where is my place in, in the hereafter? Where will I be? What do you think the Prophet said? In the authentic hadith in Bukhari, he said, Jahannam. Your place will be the Jahannam. This was to a sahaba of his. Are we deluding ourselves? Are we thinking that we are going to be, going to go to some really great place? Like those two people in Surah Kaf that Allah talks about. One of them who Allah had given a huge garden. Because the garden, Allah says in Surah Kaf, that that garden gave its fruits twice a year. Not once a year like every garden, but twice a year. It was so amazing that it was a garden between which a river flowed, surrounded by date palm trees, watered by Allah, and provided water by that beautiful river that ran in between the garden. It was so amazing that he would enter his garden, and he used to say, what? I don't think this will ever finish. And then he used to say, and if I go back to Allah, we'll find better than this. How many of us think like this? Wow, look at the wealth Allah has given us. Allah really must love me. And really, even if I were to die now, I think Jannah will be even better for me. The Hurul Ain are waiting for me. Jannah, Jannah is waiting for me. This is what we feel in our heart. My brothers and my sisters in Islam, if Jannah is waiting for you, ask Allah for death right now. Ask Allah for death. Ask Allah for death right now. If you're truthful, but you are lying to yourself. You don't believe it in your heart. If you believe it in your heart, ask Allah for death right now. Rather, each and every one of us knows we have not earned Jannah yet. Each and every one of us knows that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
has not written Jannah for us yet. We cannot have that guarantee as yet. We know that in our heart, verily mankind is ever a witness over himself, even if he gives excuses. We ourselves, our own souls are enough a witness over our own actions and deeds. We don't need anyone else to tell us. We don't need the book to tell us. We know what we have done. We know how much we have done and how little we, of good we have left on this earth. We know this, my friends. This is why we don't dare to ask for death. This is why we are afraid of doing anything that might speed up our death. Because we are afraid we have not earned Allah's mercy as yet. In another authentic hadith in Musnad Imam Ahmed, Rasulullah he was passing by a grave and he was on his horse. And as he was passing by the grave, the horse started to jump up and down and started to throw Rasulullah off its back. And at that point, Rasulullah understood and knew that grave was one of the people that he knew. And he started to cry. And at that point, he told his companion, said, Ya Ikhwani, oh my friends, for the example of this, prepare yourself. Do not be in a delusion. People will be punished in the graves. And we find numerous authentic ahadith of Rasulullah pointing to that. In fact, in the Quran itself is an indication that people will be punished in the grave. As we find in Surah Ghafir, in verse number 45 to 46, وَحَاقَ بِآلِ فِرْعَوْنَ سُوءَ الْعَذَابِ النَّارُ يُعْرَضُونَ عَلَيْهَا غُضُوَّ وَعْشِيَّةِ وَيَوْمُ الْقِيَامَةِ And on the day of judgment, أَدْخِلُوا آلَ فِرْعَوْنَ أَشَدَّ الْعَذَابِ What is being talked about here? What is the fire that was being referred to before the adab of the Jahannam? On the day of judgment? Obviously it must be the adab of the Barzakh. But they never died in the grave. Where did they, grow? Where did they die? They were, they were crushed by the water, wasn't it? They were drowned in the sea. So it does not matter wherever you are. Whether you are in the grave, or you are in ashes, or you have been lost and no one knows where you are, you cannot escape Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the barzakh is the status between this life and the hereafter. In the grave, my friends, sometimes we think that, okay, inshallah, you know, we are not going to have so much fitna. But look at the description of the people, of the angels that will come to us and ask us questions in the grave. The hadith in Sunan Tirmidhi mentioned that the people... That the two angels that will come And the ahadith mentioned that their voices are like thunder And they are completely black And their eyes are like lightning And in one hadith either the eyes are blue Or in another hadith the eyes are red And, and when they blink their eyes it's, it's lightning And the voice is like thunder And the complexion is completely black Pitch dark And this is the, these are the two question, angels that will come and question you How severe is the test going to be in the grave? Well, listen to this. Do you remember the test of the Dajjal? And so people will start leaving the religion and going and saying the Dajjal is a god. Yes or no? Tremendous fitna, yes? Well, listen to this hadith in Bukhari that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said. He said, Uhiya ilayya, it has just been revealed to me now that you will be tested in your graves. Like example or similar to the fitna of the test of the Masih Dajjal. Wallahi, whether we live for the time of the Dajjal or not, we will have a test of the Dajjal that, subhanAllah, that we cannot escape from. So the grave will be a tremendous test for us. My friends, compare your bed in your grave to your bed in your first day that you got married, in the night of your marriage. And in this time, in a couple of weeks back, I had the privilege of being, I was doing a, uh, a, a series in the graveyards of the Muslims, and, and, I, and I was in the only Muslim graveyard in Europe, the gardens of priests. And I had the privilege of actually going into one of the graves. It was a freshly cut grave and it was still wet. I could hear all the bustles and sounds outside. But as soon as I went into the grave, I could hear nothing. I said, can you please cover, cover the grave up? I said, I just, I just want to see how it feels. So they put the covering top of the grave. Wallahi, I had the most amazing experience. You're building a house that is two stories. Wallahi, the grave is not even two meters. You're building a house that has seven rooms. By Allah, the grave has only one small place that's hardly bare, barely big enough for you to lie down. And you're building a bed that is so beautiful. You buy your furniture that is so expensive, Italian furniture. But by Allah, the bed of the earth is, Wallahi, it is wet. It is murky. It is eerie. And it's completely black, pitch black. Completely pitch black. And this is your abode for Allah knows how long. Look at the people who passed away before us. Thousands of years they're still in their graves. Pass by them and think about it. My friends, truly the grave is the first status of the hereafter. 
It is for this reason why Uthman radiallahu anhu used to cry when he used to think about the grave and they used to say, why are you crying? Because truly, Qabr is the first state, it's the first dwelling place from the placing of the hereafter. If your place in the Qabr is good, then wallahi, what comes after that will be good. And if your place in the Qabr is bad, what comes after it will be bad. Why? Because in the Qabr you will have an evil man with you or you'll have a good man, good man with you. An evil man, a, a man all in black, is an authentic hadith in Bukhari, He's, he is your evil deeds. Or a man completely in white who will, be, who will be your companion in your grave. And that is your good deeds. You will also have a window in your grave that is towards your feet. And the window will be either a window from Jahannam or a window from Jannah. And so you will be able to smell Jannah and be able to see the gardens that Allah has put for you in Jannah. Or you will be able to see the Jahannam and what, what is awaiting you in your grave. Also, as the hadith mentioned, that the evil deeds will come in the form of scorpions and snakes. As in the hadith in Ibn Hibban. Also, we find in the hadith of Rasulullah once Rasulullah passed by two graves and he said, Verily, these two people are being punished. What did they do? As one of them, they used to spread tales. As, if, as for the other person, he used, not, he used to be not careful. When he was urinating, he would not cover himself. There is no more position in the hereafter. There's only two places you can go to. It's clear. There's only one or two places, either Jannah or Jahannam, that's it. And if you haven't earned enough to go to Jannah, you're definitely going to Jahannam. And what is amazing is sometimes when I hear Muslims that talk about Jahannam is only for a small amount of time. Allah is going to dip you in, just take you out. Is that what you think it's like? I once asked my Shaykh, hey, Shaykh, how long is the minimum time of Jahannam? Is there any evidence in the Quran or in the Sunnah of the minimum time of Jahannam for anyone that has done a deed that is destined to go to Jahannam. Minimum time duration. So he said, Tawfiq, I've never ever read a minimum position except one verse in the Quran. In Surah Naba, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the minimum position or the minimum time that has ever been reported in any hadith or any verse of the Quran. What is that, what is that verse? He said, Inna Jahannam kanat mirsada. Verily, Jahannam is a mirsad, a place of ambush. لِلْتَّاغِينَ maaba, A place for those people, evil and sinful, a place of ambush for them. Then Allah says, لَا بِثِينَ فِيهَا أَحْقَابًا Ya salam. They will dwell therein for ahqaba. So our Shaykh said, ahqaba comes from the word haqab. Haqab as Al-Hasan Al-Basri rahimullah said, Al-Haqab is 1000 million years from our time. So the least duration Allah has ever mentioned in the Qur'an is Ahqaba, plural of Haqab. And Ahqab is 1000 million years of our time. So my beloved brothers and my sisters in Islam, if these words are not enough to move you into action and into change, then by Allah, you are a very, very difficult person to change. The problem is, my friends, this world that we live in. Do you know what the pious predecessors, they said? They said, beware of the magic of this world. For indeed, the magic of this world is worse than the magic of Harut and Marut. Where the magic of Harut and Marut, the two angels sent to Babylon, was to do with magic that would separate between a husband and his wife. The magic of this world separates between a slave and his lord. Ya Salam. How many of us truly have connected with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? How many of us truly can confidently say, Ba Allah, there is no more anything that I can do if I know death is tomorrow? Or are you of those people who can say, definitely I can do more? If you're of those people who say, I can definitely do more, then you know what the answer is. Do it now. There is no good time to give sadaqah. The time is now. There is no good time to start praying. The time is now. There is no good time to read the Quran. Time is now. There is no good time to start memorizing the Quran. The time is now. There is no good time to, to look after orphans. The time is right now. There is no good time to call your mom and say sorry. The time is right now. Call her now and say, Mom, I'm sorry. Mom, forgive me, Mom. There is no good time to say to your friend that you have blemished and harmed. I'm sorry, my friend. The time is right now. There is no good time at all, my friends. The time is right now. The time must be now. 
Because by Allah, we don't know when we're going to live and when we're going to die. And my friends, the thing that we must be worried about is the next deed that we do. The very next deed that we do will be our end. Because you see, there is one hadith of Rasulullah that gives tremendous hope. At the same time, it gives tremendous fear. What is that hadith? That hadith is a hadith that says, Verily actions are by its ending. Tremendous hope that if I can do a good deed next, it might be my last. And so, Alhamdulillah, my, my last deed was the best deed. And so, Alhamdulillah, Allah will remember me by my, by my last thing. I'll be raised up on my last thing. But it causes me tremendous fear. That if I go back and I haven't learned anything, if I go back and I don't change, if I go back and I go back to my last routine that I, that I was on, it may be my death comes to me when I'm just an average Muslim. And that is it. My actions are judged by my average being that average Muslim on the last point of my death. The fear is, it doesn't matter what happened in the past. The hope is also that it doesn't matter what happened in the past. The fear is, that it matters the sin that you're going to do. The hope is also that be idhnillah, the next good deed that you're going to do will be your final ending. Ibn al-Qayyim rahimullah, he says, an nuniya He says, Wallahi, I don't fear my past deeds, my past sins. For indeed, I've repented to Allah and Allah loves to forgive. However, what I fear is that in the very next deed that I do, my heart will cease to command by this Quran and by this revelation. The real fear is that the very next thing that you do will be your last deed and that will be how your death is sealed. That's the real fear, my friends. And that nothing that you have done in the past will ever matter. The Prophet ﷺ said, Wallahi, there is no one amongst you except that he will do good deeds all his life and that which has been written will overtake him so he will do some bad deed and then he will have his death and that will be his Jahannam. And there is no one amongst you who will do bad deeds all their life. And then before he dies, he will do one good deed. And at that point, his death will come. And so he will go to Jannah. This is the fear and this is the hope as well. My, my brothers and sisters in Islam, how do we have safety from Qabr? The first thing that we can do is make intense amounts of dua. Rasulullah never used to say a prayer except that he would always say, Allahumma jannibna min adab al-Qabr. Once you do that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will surely answer your dua inshallah, He's merciful. The second thing that you can do is increase in your good deeds because hadith in Ibn, in Ibn Hibban and others mention, in, in Mustadrak of Al-Hakim, rahimahullah, he mentions that the good deeds will come in the form of soldiers in your grave and they will defend you from the pain and angels of punishment in your grave. And there are good deeds. There is your fasting and there is your Quran. The third thing that you can do is to be steadfast upon this religion and always be steadfast. Because as we know, the people who are steadfast, they will never have any khawf alayhim after they pass away. So be steadfast upon your deen. The next point is a surah, which is surah mulk. And this is authentic, hadith is authentic in Mustadrak of Al-Hakim upon the conditions of Bukhari and Muslim. What is the hadith? The hadith says, surah mulk protects you from the grave. You must recite it every single day. And the, and the hadith also mentions that Surah Mulk does not stop asking Allah for your forgiveness for you until it goes under the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala begging for your mercy until Allah forgives you.